What's up, Swarm Homers? My name's Aaron, and in this video, I want to show you guys the brand new Home Assistant Voice. The people at Nabucasa sent this device for me to check out, and I was not expecting what I got. Now, this is the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, and it's a new piece of hardware from the developers of Home Assistant at Nabucasa. In the past, they've developed the Home Assistant Blue, Home Assistant Yellow, Home Assistant Green, and I think the Home Assistant Voice is their best looking hardware yet. If you can't already tell, or if you haven't already heard, this is their new Voice Assistant hardware, and it has some really cool features. In this video, I'm gonna go over the hardware and I'm gonna show you the user interface inside of Home Assistant. The Home Assistant voice has a really nice feel to it. And externally, you can see that it has a center button that can be used to reset the device, stop it if it's doing some kind of action and converse with it without having to use a wake word. It has a rotary dial that could be used to change the speaker volume. And you can also use it to change the LED color, which I'll show a little bit later. On the side, it has a hardware mute switch and flipping that to mute gives you confidence that the microphone is off and that it's not listening to you. The LED ring lights up when the device wakes, but it also can use different colors and patterns for different alerts. It's powered via USB-C port and it can also be used for data and there's a 3.5 millimeter stereo output jack for connecting an external speaker if you want. There are two microphones inside and you can see the two holes for them on the top cover. If we flip it over, we can also see a Grove port. And if you don't know what the Grove ecosystem is or Grove modules are, check out my present sensor video that I just released because one of them actually has the ability to add Grove modules. They're pretty much a system of devices that you can use to make your own custom device modular. Anyway, if we peel off the rubber feet, we can see that there are four screws underneath. Like the Home Assistant Yellow, they've designed this thing so that there are no plastic clips that you might accidentally break when you're taking it apart. It's all screws and easy to take apart. Once we take the screws out, you can see the internals and we can pull the entire board out of the case. It's running an ESP32 S3 processor with 60 megabytes of flash storage and eight megabytes of PS RAM. And it has an XMOS XU316 audio processor. And the whole thing requires five volts DC power at two amps. For communication, it has a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio and a Bluetooth 5.0 low energy radio. If you're wondering about dimensions, it sits at 84 millimeters wide, 84 millimeters long, and 21 millimeters high. They didn't provide that in freedom units and I'm too lazy to convert it, so that's all you're gonna get. To connect this thing to Home Assistant, it's super easy if you have Bluetooth connectivity. And if you don't, why not? Either add Bluetooth proxy or add a Bluetooth dongle. It's very simple. All you have to do then is plug it in and then go to Home Assistant and you should see auto discovered via Bluetooth in devices and services. All you have to do is tap add and then fill in your Wi-Fi information. It'll ask for authorization to connect. So you authorize the connection by pressing the button on the middle of the device. After that, it'll connect to Wi-Fi and it'll be discovered in Home Assistant as an ESP home device. It then asks you if you want to set it up. So you agree and go through the setup process. And the setup just involves updating the firmware if needed, changing the wake word if needed, and then testing out the wake word to make sure it recognizes it when you say it. Then you can give it an area, tap next, and then set the assistant pipeline and voice. I wasn't exactly sure how voice pipelines work because I haven't messed with assist inside of Home Assistant at all, but I'll explain that briefly in a couple minutes. Next, we just tap done to finalize the installation and we can test it out now. And you can see that it responds quite quickly to my prompts, which is really cool to see. Okay, so this is a test of Home Assistant voice using the Home Assistant Cloud Pipeline. Okay, Nabu, turn on the office light. Turn down the light. Okay, so let me just walk you guys through quickly how the user interface looks in Home Assistant so you can see how it works here. And then after that, I'll show you what I learned about pipelines. In Home Assistant, you get a media player entity. So presumably you can send announcements to it, which is really cool. And then you have the button entity, which you can configure with automations. So button presses can trigger different actions. Then you have the assistant satellite, which tells you the state of the device. 
So when I say, okay, Nabu, it's state changes to listening. Down in the configuration section, you get the firmware status, and below that, you have the option to change the assistant processing method. This can be done either on device or via Home Assistant Cloud. And this is what I mean by voice pipelines, which I'll show later. If you don't have a local voice pipeline set up, then your voice won't be processed locally until you do that, but you can always do that after, which is what we're gonna do. Anyway, it's really cool that they allow you to choose which way you wanna go. And I'm just gonna leave it at preferred here and I can change my preferred pipeline later on. You can also change how aggressively it's gonna assume you're finished speaking. If you're someone who takes pauses while speaking, you may wanna set it at relaxed. It's been fine for me at the default setting. The LED ring light entity allows you to control the ring. So you can turn it on as a notification if you'd like, but you can also set the color, which will persist. And that's the active color of the LED ring. The color it will have when the device wakes up. You can actually change the color of the LED ring with the hardware too, by holding down the center button and then rotating the dial until you see the color you like. Back to the UI, you can also turn the wake sound on or off too. And finally, you can set the wake word. You can't set it to whatever you want, but you can only choose between three options. Okay, Nabu, Hey Jarvis, or Hey Mycroft. Anyway, that's the basics of how this thing works, and it's really pretty simple, and I love that. Keeping it simple is the name of the game. Like I said before, this is my first time using Assist in Home Assistant, so it's gonna be something I have to get used to. Previously, I mentioned pipelines, and like I said, these are avenues by which your voice is processed. And those can either be in some sort of cloud service or locally on your Home Assistant device. Since I'm a subscriber to the Home Assistant cloud provided by Nabucasa, it's set up that way by default. While Nabucasa is a company that's focused primarily on privacy, which I love, I still want to be able to process my own voice locally on my device. So the first thing I had to do was install an add-on for text-to-speech called Piper, and then another one called Whisper, which handles speech-to-text. Once that was done and I had them configured, I set up a voice pipeline for local voice processing by going to settings and then choosing voice assistance. I then set that pipeline as the preferred pipeline. Since I already told my home assistant voice device to use the preferred pipeline, it automatically switched from home assistant cloud to local voice processing. After setting all that up, I tested it out again and I did find that the response was a little bit slower than via the cloud. Okay, okay Nabu. Turn on the office light. In the Piper add-on configuration settings, you can play with the quality of voice recognition and lower quality voice recognition means faster response, but it also means that it's less likely to recognize your voice. When I put it on low quality, it responded extremely quickly, but it couldn't even understand some basic commands that it had just understood. I guess I got a little bit more fiddling to do to get things dialed in just right. And I'm running Home Assistant on a Home Assistant Blue, which I thought should be powerful enough to have a really snappy response, but maybe it's not. Anyway, that's my quick overview of this device. And I have to say that I am super impressed, not only by the beautiful hardware, which I love. It is the best design that we've seen them come up with so far but also by Assist and this whole onboard voice assistant that you can do right through Home Assistant. I think it's truly time to start getting rid of those cloud-based voice assistants like Amazon, Alexa, and Google Home and stick with a locally processed voice assistant that does just what you need. Anyway, I'm sure that my experience could have been a little bit better had I spent a little more time trying to configure Piper and Whisper, the two add-ons that I used but I'm actually not opposed to just using Home Assistant Cloud because I trust that company more than I trust any of those big tech companies like Amazon and Google who are farming my data every minute of the day. Anyway, I really appreciate that Nabucasa sent this device for me to check out and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. As soon as I got this thing set up and started playing with it, I loved this voice assistant so much that I immediately ordered an ESP32 Box 3 to set up as another voice assistant in a different area of my house. If you don't know what that is, and you guys wanna see me do more videos with Home Assistant Voice, let me know and maybe I could do a video on how to set that up. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, see ya.